Welcome back, Troglodytes, to your daily dose of guitar information, the Troglodytes Guitar Show. Merry Christmas! Happy Holidays! I hope you're enjoying today with your family as best you can, given the situations. So, I thought I would give us an unboxing episode for today. Starting with something that I purchased for myself, slash the show, a brand new amp. Because for the last six months or so, I've been using this Fender Deluxe Reverb. It's got a special Tolex on the side. I forget what they call this one. It's a limited edition of some sort. But what's always bugged me about this one is it, it wasn't a super hand-wired custom amp. And it's not that there's necessarily anything wrong with amps that aren't point-to-point -point wired. It's just, this is a very traditional show as far as the guitars that we demo. So I try to keep it as traditional as possible. I laugh when people say that I'm not using a real amp. <laughs> So I thought we would try something out new. And if I don't like it, I guess I can sell it on and try something else. Cause I also hooked up with Marshall, but those new amps won't be here for uh, quite a while. Uh, but for some really nice vintage Fender tones, I thought, why don't we try this bad boy? Because I have never had this particular version of a Fender amp and it's called a Princeton. And this one's actually a limited edition version called the Chris Stapleton edition. I didn't buy it because of that. I just thought it's a nice little combo amp, point to point wired. And these brown Tolex amps usually have a pretty good bite to them, like when you turn them up a little bit. And as far as our controls here, you just got two inputs. You got a volume, a tone, a speed for the tremolo effect. I can't say I'll be using that too much, but you also can control the intensity. But specs for people who care about amps, it looks like a, a 6G2 circuit, 12 watts of output power, two 6V6 power tubes, a 5Y3 rectifier, and two 12AX7 preamps, and a 12-inch Eminescence CS speaker upgraded from the original 10 inch. So I guess that's something that makes this one special. Now for me, I've never been much of an amp guy, so I'm always just buying blindly. So we'll just set this guy off to the side here for now, but that's looking pretty nice. But speaking of Christmas, I thought it'd be good to unbox a couple of white Christmas guitars. However, before we get into guitar unboxing, we need to talk about our sponsor today, String Swing. String Swing is honestly one of the leading makers of guitar stands. Whether you knew it or not, I was actually using the String Swing heads on all the other stands that you've seen up until this point in my channel. So they reached out and sent me one of their metal stands. I was really curious how this would compare to the wooden stands that I already have, because they're very similar. And here are my first opinions on this. At first, I thought it was just like a single sheet of metal, but no, it's like two of them together. So it does feel very sturdy and it secures to the base rather easily. I think it took me, what, 10 minutes to put this together. It's definitely very sturdy, so no worries there. And a feature that I really liked is you can actually move the rubber bumper. So say you want to put a smaller guitar on here or a baritone guitar and the bumper doesn't line up, you can just take that out and move it down. But String Swing offers a plethora of products, as you can see here in their manual. I wouldn't mind picking up some of their store displays, but they also just sell the hangers themselves that you can drill into your wall if you prefer to hang things up. Thank you, String Swing, for sponsoring today's episode. Don't forget to visit their website. I will leave a link in the description. Uh, these have been guitars that I actually got one of these kind of closer to when they had initially came out this year from Gibson. But the problem was I was just so backed up and I'm really not in that much better of condition. I'm not even sure if I'll end up reviewing these or not, but we'll just kind of use this episode to go over them a little bit more in depth since I don't have tons of guitars and it's a special episode. We can talk about things a little longer, but these have been so delayed. Like it's not even funny how delayed these guys have been. After I had sold that one, I had a lot of people going, hey, hey, I want one of those. Can I get it? It's like, well, yes, I can get it for you, but they're not expected for like months and months and months. But inside here for our white Christmas unboxing, we get, oh, I thought these were supposed to have uncovered pickups. Maybe I'm just remembering wrong. It's been so long. This is the 70s Flying V by Gibson. Man, something looks strange about this one. What on earth? I did. I got a factory freak. Because I bought this directly from Gibson's website. Yeah, this is supposed to have uncovered pickups. 
I thought that looked goofy. I wonder if I actually have the right pickups in here in general. It was supposed to have a pair of uncovered 70s tribute humbuckers, but what is actually in this one? A burst bucker two and three. <laughs> okay, I'm not sure if that's correct or not. Like, do the 70s ones just have the burst bucker stickers? But I'm guessing there was a bit of a whoopsie on this one. Yeah, because I got the knobs. It looks like I got a black switch tip instead of white. Did they get the tuners right? Yeah, everything else seems to be okay, I guess. <laughs> okay then, we had a uh, Christmas mystery surprise. I don't know about you guys, but I really do not like the look of the covers on this white finish when everything else is kind of black. That whole double black vibe out really does look, you know, super 70s. So this is just kind of a interesting factory freak. It's not like a demo model or anything like that. This is factory brand new. I never got to see it before they shipped it out. Yeah, but that one was made the 245th day of the year, 2020. So hey, that just goes to show you, sometimes you can get some freaky guitars. Like, remember that one time we found that Scully slash signature that didn't actually have the Scully on the back of the headstock? And we just recently found one of those Gibson Les Pauls that didn't have the Les Paul model silk screen on the headstock? It happens to the best of us. You, you think that the quality control would check that out though. I'm curious to see, is it on the bench? Yeah, sure enough. It's got the photo right there. <laughs> or maybe it's a special limited edition that they didn't tell me about. So basically the whole thing with the 70s, it comes down to the construction, how that neck actually sticks up a little bit. 70s flying Vs, I mean, they're fantastic. the tone kind of acts as kind of like a tone knob on your guitar. Sounds like something like seven would be like normal-ish. gonna say this is my favorite amp so far maybe it wasn't quite the right choice for myself so maybe the marshals will do me better but it's a nice sounding little clean amp if you like that whole tremolo stuff as far as qc goes so far the only thing i see is there's like a very tiny little ding right here on the side of the headstock not that big of a deal and you got your typical lacquer lines along your nut they definitely could have done better with the binding I mean, it's not the worst, but you can tell where it kind of slopes up and down. The only other thing I wish they would change is go back to the other style V cases. I don't like them when they're blocky like this. This one just looks like those aftermarket Chinese cases. I guess we should check where this one was made. Yeah, this one was made in Costa Rica, so they're specifically telling them to do that. But hey, that was an interesting find. I wasn't expecting to get one that was a factory freak. Now let's come over here and unbox our next Christmas special one. Kind of similar to the one that we just unboxed, but with a different body style. Now, I do not believe I've actually seen one of these things in person yet. But it's definitely been a long time coming to see one. I mean, this box weighs at least twice as much as that last one. You know, I'm surprised that Flying V case wasn't super heavy since it was made in Costa Rica. Usually those are the heavy cases. You can definitely tell this one's a Costa Rican made case. <laughs> but being a large rectangular case, what can you really expect? I kind of like the new latches they use though. They're kind of a rectangular in shape. Inside here for our Christmas special number two guitar. 
It's the White Explorer. There we go. Now that looks natural not having the pickup covers on it. Normally, I'm a pickup cover on type of guy, but for this 70s inspired one, it makes sense not to have it. Now, what I really like straight out of the box is the white finish kind of acts as binding. Like the headstock itself isn't actually bound, but since the white finish kind of comes up over the sides, it gives that illusion. So that makes that very striking. I like the look of this Explorer. You know, completely cream with a little bit of white on your pick guard. The double black pickups, yep, that's the way an Explorer is meant to be. Now, as far as QC on this one, I'm seeing like a, what might have been like some sort of a chip in the finish up here. It's like there's actually something underneath the finish that got sprayed over. That's a bit unfortunate. Since I was taking photos of this, I decided to look at the pickups, and yeah, sure enough, it should be labeled Rhythm 70, so that means my V is a true freak. It looks like some uh, heavy scratches by the nut, like they were trying to polish it or something. They don't look like actual finished cracks, like the guitar was damaged or anything. And yeah, you really cannot see the serial number in the slightest. It's there, but almost impossible to read. I know you guys have been waiting a long time to see one of these guys in the flesh. Now, first impressions from this, I, I think the looks are fantastic. It's got a nice rounded neck profile, but not like super chunky. I would consider this just slightly thinner than like a medium neck profile. Definitely gets chunkier as you go up here, but yeah, it's it kind of starts to feel flatter at the same time. So that'd be good for solo work. And it's just all your regular case candy in here, baby photo, checklist. And at least we have our serial number on here. So it was May 2020, 171st day of the year. They must have stamped a whole bunch of these necks and then got put on shutdown or something and then they didn't complete them till here because I've been waiting quite a long time even for these guys to come in. I think I ordered them about four months ago. Honestly, that headstock thing, I probably would suggest to return. However, I won't worry about it. I'll just sell it as is. Now let's move on to our second to last Christmas unboxing. I thought about doing like the 12 days of Christmas unboxing 12 guitars, but after doing that prototype video where I think I did what, eight of them in one episode? Man, that, that just would have been too long. And honestly, a little bit grueling because I like to unbox like maybe three or four at a time because then you're excited, you want to see all the new stuff. But you just kind of get a sensory overload. And speaking of sensory overload, I got some sugar here. A little bit of Bitto Honey. No Laffy Taffies though, that's a little bit of a letdown. And the reason why I bought this one is because you guys seem to really like that smokehouse burst color. And unfortunately they were out of stock out of any more of those. So I thought we would check out a different color on the Les Paul Classic, just for fun here. Not as like a review and demo piece or anything, but I thought this one had some pretty exceptional wood grain. Oh yeah, this is another Costa Rican case. Now, if you like heavy cases, you're gonna like the modern day Gibsons. What color did I get? on the new Les Paul Classic. Honey Burst, or something like that. Oh yeah, that's a nice top. Okay, so this is a plain top, but what I like is you get a little bit of bird's eye in a few locations. You can kind of see what I'm talking about here in this camera, and even a little bit more better in this particular angle. But it's just a nice little plain top. I thought I'd pick it up for somebody who's looking for a deal on a Les Paul Classic. Now these classics, I've got a lot of people telling me that they're just like the 50s, 60s Les Paul standards, but they're a little bit cheaper and you get fancier tuning options and whatnot. Yes and no, I would not agree with that because the classics, they're nice, but they don't feel anywhere near as nice as the 50s, 60s Les Paul standards. I mean, if you don't need fancy electronics, I heavily suggest just going for a 50s or 60s Les Paul standard because they are different enough. Sometimes it just comes down to finish options and aesthetics, but these guys, they still feel nice, don't get me wrong, but they've got slightly thinner neck profiles and they just don't quite look like historic Gibsons like those 50s and 60s standards tend to do. Like they've really knocked out the finishes on those examples. But you can also pick up these classics a lot cheaper used than you can. But I think when it comes down to the new department, I think you're better off going for one of those, honestly, unless you can get a good deal. Well, this one was made the 272nd day of the year, 2020. Uh-oh, it looks like 
I kind of installed our tuners a bit crooked here. <laughs> 0 for 3 on perfect quality control. I feel like uh, perfectly lined up tuners, not having anything in the finish, making sure you've got the right pickups in there. That's all fair game that we can say, hey, Gibson, you, you need to work on that a little bit. But nothing to ruin my Christmas over here. And lastly here, I don't know where it is. I'm running out of room in this small area. I think it's right here. So this, well, we kind of already unboxed this guitar, actually twice. And the last one that I got, unfortunately, there were some mystery scratches on it. And feeling inside that case, it felt like there was like maybe a staple that they used when they were putting the case together. That potentially, if the guitar, you know, really got jammed up against the lid, it could have done the scratches, but I'm not so sure about that. But I had to replace that guitar for him because he didn't want one that was scratched. I don't blame him. So you can check that one out in my reverb shop if you're interested. But I ended up purchasing this from a reseller because he initially bought this one from Japan strictly to resell. I mean, you can tell right here, this is actually opened at customs by US Fish and Wildlife for inspection. So this is definitely one very well-traveled guitar because it started in the USA, got shipped off to Japan, came back to the USA. I think it was in like Wisconsin or something. And now it's here in Ohio. And now after we get done unboxing this, I need to ship it off to Australia. Well-traveled instrument. You know, it's funny how things like that happen, right? And just like our other one, the, the Japan cases always seem to be okay. Like they might have fixed them before they shipped them out to dealers. Because this guy, it doesn't have any major blemishes or anything. God, it, it better be just about perfect. I'd say after an inspection on this one, it's okay. I mean, it's a VOS finish, so there's going to be like some natural smudges from when they apply that disgusting stuff that I don't think they should even have to do. So this one is definitely perfect. And, and hopefully my last aged and signed comes in because that one still needs to be shipped off to Australia. I was told I was supposed to get it early December, but... so I'm sure we'll see that one in a future episode. But I hope you chocolateites enjoyed our little Christmas unboxing here of some very nice Gibson guitars. But before we say goodbye, let's go ahead and pack some stuff up. It's funny, you tell people you have cases and then they attack you to purchase them. <laughs> yeah, these things did not take long to sell at all. So three custom shops in a Gibson USA. Now I have to find boxes to pack them up though. Everything sold within a couple of hours of posting that Gibson employee haul unboxing uncasing slash video. Time to pack up that Esquire. This video like just completely flopped, but I enjoyed the guitar anyway, so it was fun to check it out. I think that's what the broadcaster video did too, but then it slowly got a bunch of views over time. Like even I'm surprised at the 200,000 views on that video. Maybe it's just cause I uploaded it at midnight. I try not to do that, but in order to, you know, give you guys a video every single day, sometimes they just get out very late. Thank you for tuning in today, Troglodytes. I hope you had a merry holiday season and a great Christmas. Don't forget to check out our sponsor of today's episode, String Swing at stringswing.com, and we will catch you tomorrow on the next episode. Take care.